stay at home, can't stay in school. Old folks say, you poor little fool. Down the street, I'm the girl next door. I'm the fox you've been waiting for. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mom. I'm your ch 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 cheery bomb. Uh, hi, Art Fine here, Art Fine's Poker Fight. I just got a haircut before the show, not always a good idea. Uh, a very special guest, a real terrific guest. First Thank time, you. Thank you uh, very first much. First time in, uh, Sheree Curry. Sheree, oh, welcome to the show. Thank you, We're Art. very pleased to have you here. Thanks, Tom. And of course, we've got uh, Todd Everett. Not a special guest. As always. Um, we have lots and lots to talk about. Sheree's uh, starting up another phase of her career with the Blue, Blue Canyon. Canyon Band, which we'll get to later, but let's work our way up to that and talk about her. Formative days uh, with the Runaways and as the solo, as well as duet, period after that. And as a, a uh, movie and television <laughs> and actress. And as a movie and television actress, of course. Uh, we, we know you well from your days in the late 70s as the, in the Runaways, and this is the way you looked when you were uh, in the movie Foxes, and a pretty much famous haircut that widely imitated all around the world. I guess this is what you do at close up on public access. You kind of go like that, and maybe they get around to it. But, um, <laughs> What about that period of the mid-70s? You were a kid in the valley, and Kim Fowley was auditioning for a bunch of girls who were so, who, three girls who were together already, Sandy West, Joan, and Lita. Lita. Lita Ford. And you came across this situation, or? Well, what? actually, I was just uh, sitting at the bar there in a place called the Sugar Shack, which was a um, teenage discotheque. Uh -huh. And you, you had to be under 21 to get it. Where is there? It sounds like a spot for my book. Where was that? Oh, that's uh, Witsit and uh, Witsit Moore Park? Uh, no, 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 no. And is the Witsit and Magnolia. Is the building still up? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the place where Ronnie Mac? Was? No, it's not Jack Sugar Shack. That's a different one. No, no, no. Uh, never anyway, mind. anyhow. So, yes, you were there. Place you were sitting, you're sitting at the bar, right. <laughs> grinding over your Coke or right, something like exactly. that. Right, yeah. exactly. And uh, uh, Kim Fowley and Joan came up to me and asked if I could sing or play an instrument. And I said, well, I can sing a little bit. And uh -huh. So he had me come and audition. And, and Joan. So it and was your looks initially that attracted them to you. They, they didn't know that you were capable of anything. Right. Oh, and age. And, and age. age, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and age. I was 15, uh -huh. and uh, so uh, uh, I, I went to audition, and Joan and Kim wrote Cherry Bomb right there on the spot for me to audition with, and, <laughs> and here we, there you have uh, it. And we just heard it as the <laughs> intro to this show. Uh, what, by the way, what recording was it we just heard? Uh, that was Cherry Bomb off the, uh, the new re-release of Messing with the Boys. So let's take a look at this if you can. This is the brand new re-release of entirely you and your sister, or some you and your sister? It's entirely. Oh, no, it's, yes, Marie, Marie and I do this, uh, do the, the first ten cuts, uh -huh. of course, which was the, uh, it was remastered, um, Messing with the Boys album off of Capitol. Uh -huh. And then um, I added seven new tunes. Mm -hmm. We had already cut the tracks back in 1981 uh -huh. for uh, another record when they dropped me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway. They so resurfaced. the seven new tunes are you singing now over now. 1981 tracks? Exactly. Oh, really? <laughs> it was not easy. That's how you get that great 80s nostalgia oh, feel to your... I'll tell you. <laughs> and they only gave me two days to do it, too. Were the keys so. okay, or did you have to really just force They're yourself? They're all right. They're <laughs> all right. It's just, yeah, very dated songs. Having uh -huh. to do them today was really hard, but... <laughs> what uh, music were you fixing? Oh, no, I didn't ask you the standard first question. What's the first record you bought? First record I ever bought? Yeah. yeah. More I'm counting Tubby the Tuba or something like that. I think it had to be David Bowie, Diamond Dogs. And the first concert you went to? That David was. Bowie, Diamond Dogs. <laughs> On that tour? Where yeah. was that? That was, he was at the Universal Amphitheater. Uh -huh. And it was when I saw him there that I realized that that was what I wanted to do. You so know, I cut my hair off, dyed it red, yeah. white, and blue, and went to school that way with a lightning bolt across my face. Is, is that right? <laughs> yes. And that was the place you were kicked out of? That was Birmingham? No, <laughs> no, that was Mulholland Junior High School. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh. I actually made it through junior high. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a product of the glam era, uh, though you were sim you and the, and the band were simultaneous, more or less, with uh, Susie Quattro. There isn't a lot of clear influence yet it had to have been an influence right oh sure i mean yeah it might have been the whole solar x and uh solar x <laughs> the new york they haven't revived the, yet what was it the new york's the new york dolls 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Mara over there, my yeah. manager. Hello, Mara I'm, Fox. Hi, Mara. Uh, Great guitar player from Precious Metal way but back were when. Were you familiar with Susie Quattro stuff at the time? Oh. Big fan of Susie's. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah, yeah. She popped up on Absolutely Fabulous about two years ago. Oh. I imagine she still must be playing in England. She is such a well, great she married, girl. She married, a, was it a guitar player, must have been, Len, in her band, and I think they're still living over there. He was English. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. still is. <laughs> we actually got to witness a little bit of her Japanese wedding there in Japan. It's oh, really? fun. Really? Oh, she's such a great, 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 great girl. Yeah. Well, during, so, okay, so Capital ended in the 81, 82 period. The Runaways ran from 76 to 79 in, in mm -hmm. about there. Uh, I've always heard about you, that you and your sister particularly had a following in Japan. Did that sustain you for a while, that, that, when the American thing fell off somewhat? Well, uh, sustain us, no. No. We did, <laughs> <laughs> we did go and do a little tour yeah. Japan, which was lots of fun except the only problem was that it wasn't a concert tour, it was a television tour, yeah. which was a lot harder than a concert tour. And I mean, they have you up. And a lot less money, yeah. Well, yeah, but also they have you up at seven and then you work all day long, then they make you go to clubs at night, and then they put you to bed at 2.30 and they make you get up at five. But to who be was, who like was a publicizing what? Who was paying you to do what? In other words, were you there just to greet people or are you? Actually, no, Marie sang a song on uh, the Messing With The Boys album. Uh -huh. uh, with me, we did a little, little duet, and that. Then we actually re-recorded it in Japanese in Japan, mm. which kind of took off. So a it was bit. a personal appearance tour to support the record. Correct. And the Runaways were big time in Japan, weren't you? Very big. So very. Big. This was left over from that, or continued on from that. This was well when I did the Beauty's Only Skin Deep album after I'd left the Runaways. Oh. That actually was made for Japan. There weren't too many runaway knockoffs, were there? I mean, you know, it was a pretty good image, a pretty good shtick, but, you know, as let's say, there were a lot of Springsteen imitators, there were a lot of this and that, there weren't many. Yeah, I mean, did you see any, uh, you see or hear anybody who said they're doing our act or they're doing our act badly, no. trying to do our act specifically? No, actually, I, I no, I didn't. There wasn't a lot I of didn't. tough girl things. We've been, uh, people, other bands have been compared to the runaways. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but just because they're right. all female. Yeah. By the way, did you see the heaters at all? No. Girl group, okay. Were they good? They were great. Wow. They're my favorite band. Favorite band from L.A. Um, yeah? Your favorite band from L.A.? That's right. That's I used not to manage very the blast, nice. Except for the Runaways. So. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget Cherie and Marie. My, my personal favorite band from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Todd. <laughs> so how many times did you do in Japan? Not to mention Precious Metal. Yeah. Precious yeah. Metal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we toured Japan with the Runaways toured Japan once uh -huh. with the original five, me five members. I'm not sure if they ever made it back after I left the band and Jackie, but mm -hmm. uh, they probably did. Speaking of them for a second, uh, we know that Jackie is a lawyer mm -hmm. in, in L.A.? Yeah. In LA. I know she was what, in San Francisco. She's she a very good Francisco. lawyer, too. She's in LA. Yeah, she's great. I talk to Jackie very, very often. Yeah, you guys uh, had music, the musicians had musical chops, which perhaps differentiated them from some of the gal groups from L.A. that followed you. Uh, you actually had some kind of I prowess. Agree. You know, I don't really think... And the lead singer could sing, which differentiated <laughs> you from the, from the really next group that followed you. Yeah. I really couldn't sing that well in The Runaways, actually. Uh -huh. I feel that my voice, it was so funny, because I started singing at 15, and it started changing all over the place. And, they, and also, <laughs> I never knew you could change a key to a song, uh -huh. because they'd say, The Runaways <laughs> would write the song, Leader or Joan, or or Kim or whoever write a song and say, sing this. <laughs> and so I sang it. Yeah. I didn't know that you could change the key. So usually it was down like it. Uh, way <laughs> down there, I didn't know that you could change keys. So anyway, I sing better now. <laughs> so Thank Joan, God. for instance, would write a song in her own key, the key that she was used to. Or whatever sounded best yeah, yeah, on yeah. the guitar. Yeah. That was the for most important thing. <laughs> if the sounded right on the guitar, then that was the way it was going to go. <laughs> now, how quick was the uh, takeoff for the for the band? Because I remember, I wrote a thing. One of the first reviews I wrote uh, in some was it a good one? throwaway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In some throwaway paper that I, I found it in your press kits subsequently, uh, but. It, the band was introduced to the. I mean, it was the same time that Kiss was introduced with a big, uh, a big, you know, thing at the Century Plaza, and all the attention worked, and they immediately went to the top. Uh, I don't remember. Was there a big prior? You know, There's a point here. Fundamental you know, being basically, you, you, were you famous overnight? No, I think. Uh, well, we we went on the road. Our first tour was three and a half months. 
once we had gotten together, within two weeks we, we had our deal and we were in the studio. How about locally here in L.A.? How about locally what? Locally what, yeah. Well, you, uh, so that did, explains did, my questions. Yeah, what? Did, I mean, were you well, and did you immediately start playing you yes. know, the good places and that sort nope, of thing? Nope, nope. Our first gig was at Wild Man Sam's in Orange County. It was a place <laughs> okay. about the size Another of my closet. Yeah. And, uh, How about the Rock Corporation? Did you play that? No. no very nice. Okay. Lots of places in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then we moved to uh, the Starwood, which was much better, well, and the Whiskey time. A Go-Go after the uh, the album came out and uh, so the whiskey was an improvement over the starwood just in terms of <laughs> prestige or whatever i love the starwood was my favorite starwood is good yeah that was really magic back then don't you think oh yeah yeah with all the great bands the sticks was they played i mean all the and, big and people. zolar x as you say no one never saw zolar x i said nobody <laughs> ever saw zolar x we should we should <laughs> this explain, is rod yeah we should uh, yeah. explain to the kids <laughs> in the audience and the people from out of town zolar x was this glam band who dressed like in outer space suits all the time and claimed to be from, I think, the planet Zolar X. Uh -huh. And they, they never broke character the entire time. And nobody ever actually saw them, but they were a band, apparently. Well, you know who I blame and for, for their success is Rodney Bingenheimer. <laughs> and that's who I, how, how I found out about Zolar X was because he had a big Zolar X in <laughs> Rodney Bingenheimer's English disco, and then once he closed it down, he gave them to me. So I had all this big Zolar X thing wow. in my garage <laughs> until I sold it at a garage sale. Oh. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Sheree Curry's garage sale. I would, I would have done that. Oh. That's too bad. So were you part of the Rodney's scene? Did you hang out at the, at, at the club? Oh, which yes. Is sort of glam central in Sunset Strip? Oh, yes. That was fun. You know, Rodney was really, he's still pretty outrageous, but he was... Yeah. He was so mysterious and <laughs> Rodney mysterious. Wow, <laughs> he was like this little giant yeah. of the rock and roll industry to me, I guess. Okay. Uh, let me jump ahead a little bit. I mean, th jump ahead till right today. I don't know if you have that uh, audio tape queued up for the uh, Sheree Curry and Blue Canyon band. The first cut is called Believe. Believe. So we're gonna take a little listen to what you're doing now. Um, so this is recorded, of course, here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The other two guys in the band are? Craig Doucet and Mickey Miller. Play. And this, this is a song I wrote. Uh, actually, I wrote this for a friend of mine that uh, we were doing an, an, an album to benefit an AIDS project. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wrote this song called Belief, just about the word and the power of the word. It's well, pretty M.O.R. Let's take a listen. If you got it ready, we'd like to hear that. And look it up. Okay, 
believe what some some kind of singing going on there. Oh, thanks. This is, this is like uh, a whole new side. I mean, not that you weren't singing before, but you were. Oh, more rock and This is well, more canyony. It's canyony stuff. Yeah. And blue is this and sort of the sound of what the the new outfit is like? I mean, not necessarily all ballads, but more acoustic. Well, more you know, I wanted to write songs that had meaning to them, rather than. You know, who you slept with last night, who you're going to sleep with the night, the following night, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I just, is, I mean, you know, I have a, a child, mm -hmm. and uh, Jake, who's seven years old, and just, uh, you know, life takes its turns, and so I wrote, I write songs that mean something to me. How did you? Uh, your first movie was Foxes, mm -hmm. which was Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster started it with Sally Kellerman and Randy Quaid and, and Scott Baio. It was Bayo. a pretty big movie at the at the time, and I think kind of finally regarded in some circles. Yeah. But how did, how did you wind up a movie star? Movie star. Movie actress. Thanks. You were uh, a runaway, right? Right. I, I Well, no, I'd left the runaways. Okay. And um, actually, I'd done a, a show at the Golden West, oh, well, wasn't that, I'm sorry, the uh, Golden Bear in uh, Huntington, Huntington Beach. Beach. I don't yeah. know if it gets there anymore, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, Capitol Records was there, and also uh, the William Morris Agency. So Dennis this is Brody a showcase as a singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dennis Brody came up to me and he asked if I'd be interested in acting, and I said, well, sure. And the second film I went out on was Foxes. Wow. So I was lucky. What was the first one? Did it become I, anything? The first one, I can't remember the name of it, but I ended up getting that too, but I had turned that down to take Foxes. So I was thinking, wow. Where are you in Twilight Zone, the movie? <laughs> I'm the girl with no mouth. And the girl who, the, well, actually, it's a long story. Joe Dante uh, was directing um, this segment of The Twilight Zone, and he just happened to like my eyes, so he called and asked if I'd do it. Because, of course, it's all eyes, you know. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember you? me now? I, I was in the wheelchair. I, I, no, I saw that movie <laughs> once when it first came out. Yeah, I don't remember that lately either. Yeah. I don't remember anything Shame. about it. It's not just forgetting you. It's Forgetting the whole movie. Oh, what, how about, although I'm a about, Joe Dante fan, so I'm impressed by the fact that that was a segment you were in. Oh, uh, <laughs> and and Rob Bottin did my makeup. Nobody died while the they were best. making your segment. Was, did they? No. <laughs> so Spinal Tap, uh, what were you in that? <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh, I see. But you appeared in Spinal Tap. What would you have wait. been in Spinal Tap? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Um, the thing is, is that I was the opening band for Spinal Tap in the movie. And uh, they have released a disc of all the outtakes now. So wow. you'll see that I was in just more than just a second. Wow. Really great. And uh, actually, my character, she had this big herpes sore on her <laughs> lip. And then, if, if you start noticing throughout the movie, each one of the members start getting this big wow. old canker sore on their mouth, this herpes sore on their mouth. So that part is in the movie as we saw it, but no explanation of specifically exactly. where it was Exactly. It was supposed to from. come from me. Well, the herpes made it, but she didn't. So I was, I was, continuing character. yeah, I was the slut in the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? And Sorry it, you know, missed that. <laughs> yeah, well, you can go see it on disc if you want to. All right, Todd, uh, you're a smart guy. Uh, what was the Joan Jett movie? Uh, Light, Light of Day. day. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, you're going to know. I almost but, uh, said With it Michael J. Fox and, and Jenna Rollins. Mm -hmm. Very good. And including a big face-off between Joan and Jenna Rollins where Joan didn't look at all bad. I mean, she really Joan, yeah. held her She did a good that. job. Joan did a she really was acting. Job. Joan, yeah, yeah. She, Joan was Joan, I think. She did a really good job of being naturally herself. I thought she did a great, great, great job. And you're you're doing something acting now. You're a TV thing. You're, you're right. Working. There's a well. We're getting ready to shoot a pilot called The Street Singers, and uh, I'm hosting it with Mark Williamson, who is an extremely talented mus uh, music man. So it's a variety thing. Uh, yes, it's a it's a musical variety show show show, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's like taking it to the streets kind of a deal. You, you know, you go a lot of it'll be shot on the on the boulevard, and different parts of Los Angeles, and it's it's like one of those fun one of those type of fun things. things. Yeah, Good. fun, fun. Uh, Who would this be for? Do do you know yet? Well, we're just shooting the pilot right now. So you're doing it for the production company right. and then trying to sell it. Well, Rather yeah, there's a lot of interest. Being commissioned by NBC or somebody like. That. I'm just, I'm just an actress in it. Okay. I'm just, I'm just hosting it. Uh, <laughs> but, 
Anyway, yeah, that's fun. We're having a good time doing that. I was trying to remember, what was that Paul Revere in the Raiders series where they did, went on location with all the people? But not where the action is. No, not sure. Well, that's what I was thinking of. Yes, was it? <laughs> um, back to the Runaways some more. The Runaways ran their run and then uh, this, this uh, went apart or uh, something happened to cause the... Uh, well, you know, it, we've been working really hard uh, for years and years, and uh, like I said, I, we, we, when we started, we were 15, 16, and 17 years old, mm -hmm. and after being on the road for, you know, three years and uh, three or four albums later, it, uh, there was just a whole lot of tension, and Kim Fowley didn't help, <laughs> and uh, so was eventually... Was he your manager and producer? He was our manager, our producer, our guardian, our everything... Ooh, but God. he didn't do any of it well, yeah, really. Yeah. He just kind of pitted us against each other continuously to uh, to uh, keep, I guess, whatever power he had in the runaways. And eventually it took its toll, and we all just, uh, well, I had to leave. Jackie left in Japan, and then I. So Jackie uh, was the first original. Well, she wasn't an original. Well, both Jackie. Of the, of the well-known runaways, she was the first one to leave. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. of the five, right, five girls. And uh, so he, Kim must own the name Runaways. I'm Not sure. anymore. No? No, you got it. <laughs> Not anymore, he doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, yeah we finally sued him because, uh, you know, it was funny because he was taking, I guess, 75% uh, of everything and then giving us 25% and then he decided he didn't want us to have the 25% anymore. Uh -huh. And uh, after years and years and years of him collecting all this money and uh, Joan and Kenny, Kenny Laguna, her manager, and, uh, brought uh, Lita and Sandy and I together and we uh, went after him. There is occasional talk of a runaways reunion. Do you see that happening? I can't comment. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but we're really good friends, all of us, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we're putting together a, a compilation right now. Oh, okay. Of so there's a, a, a compilation of past tracks? All Runaways, yes. So you now own the tracks? Oh, yes. Oh, you got the we, tracks. We, we, we own know? anything that has to do with the Runaways. Oh, so this is, a, I, was wor I was wondering whether this actually had taken place, because there's suits like this, let's say Darlene Love suit Phil Spector, and she got a very sympathetic jury, but it doesn't really know whether it'll actually happen. I mean, somebody could overturn oh, no, we the did sympathetic it. jury. It's You're done. actually, it's all it's done, a done, a done deal. deal. It's so a done deal. Terrific. And uh, yeah, so we, we're really good friends, all of us, and we talk all the time, and we'll see what happens. Hmm. And are all of you, except Jackie, who's got her own job, but are all the rest of you still in show business as performers, more or less? Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. said your sister had a business also. Oh, well, my sister's a, she's a sculptor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yeah, she's doing good. As Murray Curry, I mean, is that? Mm -hmm. What name, you would go look for the name you'll see on the pot. The name of the card on, on the card under the sculpture. Right. Yeah. Almost, yeah. She's very bright. And you, bright and girl. She, she just wrote a. Uh, she just wrote a uh, script and a book, uh, called the Narrow Road of Light. And uh, there's a lot of interest going on right now for, with that. Really, really powerful. And her kids book. are a little older. Yours are yours are seven. Is there any musical uh, business going on with her kids? Oh, Trevor is a great drummer. How old is he? He's 11, uh -huh. and he just played with uh, his father, Steve Lukather, and Billy Idol at uh, the St. Francis School. Uh, they're having a fair, and uh, huh. and he just, I mean, he keeps time better than a lot of drummers I know, <laughs> this kid. Yeah, he's very talented, and Tina's got a great voice. She's a fabulous singer, and she's been doing session work. Uh -huh. She just turned 13. Wow. Beautiful girl. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, she's going to be driving her mom and dad crazy in just a couple <laughs> pretty, more pretty years. So, pretty soon, and that mm -hmm. full teenage thing hits. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. The half hour is just about up, and we have another song off of the Cherie Curry and Blue Canyon. Is this available, the, the, the yes, acoustic cut we heard before and the one that's coming up? Uh, believe is not at this point. Uh, we're right now finishing up that record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Messing with the Boys is available now. Tower Records or anywhere else you want to go. Uh, do you have a web page? No. Oh. I don't even have a computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look yourself up on the internet sometime, which I did before, you know, coming down here today. You'll and find all sister, sorts of You have a computer, things. don't you, Mara? What's the name of the Mara Fox agency if they need to reach you professionally? 
Times Square Productions that's in Los come Angeles. Here, Mara. It's a two one three. You can come on stage because right now we're not going to talk. We're going to listen to the second cut that we have off the, uh, the new album. Thanks for having me. You guys are really neat. <laughs> Thanks for being there. Thank you. Let's take a listen to that tape and we'll go out on the credits on that. And Mara is going to come tiptoeing over here, I think. Smile, not even <laughs> and she never speaks of things like dying. She's got one foot in the cradle and the other on a nail. She's growing old, is an idea she's not buying. It's not where you've been that really counts, it's where you're going. And what's to reap, girl, if you know just what you saw in. Leave the past, forget tomorrow, it's today. You and I, it's not where you've been, but what you are now. She talks of love, she talks of living. And if life been putting out, then you're not giving. She gave her heart to only one who shares his face with the son who's grown and gone. But he's never gone for long It's not where you've been that really counts It's where you're going And what's to reap, girl, if you know just what you saw in Leave the past, forget tomorrow It's today, you and now It's not where you've been But what you are now you are now. 